Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. At kayo sumusubaybay sa MMK. At ako naman po ang inyong lingkod na si Dandan Kabakuna. Ang kwento natin ngayon ay tungkol kay William Hinampas. Dear Papa Dan, ako nga pala si William. Nang mataas na paaralan ng mataas na kahoy at ako ay labing apat na gula. Ang tanging mataas lang po sa akin ay ang pangarap ko. Ganto po kasi ako pinanganak, maliit. Lagi po ako natutokso sa school na pandak. Ito nga po nilang gawin sa akin ay magkunwari na din nila ako napapansin. Kasi masyado daw ako maliit. Para sa akin, okay lang po yung mga tukso. Salita lang yan. Kaso, minsan sumusobra na po eh. Nakakatawa nga pong isipin na baka pwede na ako maging stuntman sa isang pelikula. Dahil sa mga na-experience ko, minsan inisip ko na bakit parang lagi na lang ako gumugulo sa hirap ng buhay? Dahil ba sa akin? Kasalanan ko ba? Bakit parang galit sa akin ang mundo? Hindi ba matatapos ang paggulong-gulong kong ito? Kasi minsan, nakasawa na rin tumakbo. Ang gusto ko lang naman ay mag-aral at makapagtapos. Ang gusto ko lang ay maabot ang mga pangarap ko. At sa isang peses, maramdaman ko na hindi na ako maliit. Pero paminsan, paminsan talaga, parang handa na akong sumuko. Nakakapagod na po kasing magpatuloy kung lagi kang inaapi. Makakala ko nga po, hindi na to titingil hanggat nung dumating na siya. Meron ako nakilala at meron siyang kwento na nakapagpabago ng buhay ko. Bro, kala ko ba ng tissue? Hindi alam mo ba si Saint Pelé? Oo. Uh -uh. Sige, ko pwede rin sa'yo. Pierre Romanchon was born to a French farming family in the village of Thuray in South Central France on June 13, 1805. Pierre, who would eventually grow up into the inspiring brother we know him as today, was always an exceptionally talented and intelligent student. But more than anything, Pierre was always fond of prayer and Jesus that he even taught his schoolmates different kinds of prayers. His light to the people around him was destined to become something even brighter than what it was before. At the age of 13, he met a Christian brother while shopping around the day market in clermont ferrand The chance encounter with the brother sparked his desire to become one of them, one of the Christian brothers, because he was never really equipped to become a farmer like his parents. He rather much envisioned himself as a member of the Christian Brothers. Because of this love, he soon enrolled at a brother-administered school in Rion, France, against the will of his own, of his own dad, to learn more about it, what it takes to become a true brother. Pierre quickly thought the attention of his superiors and just because of his natural giftedness compared to his schoolmates, the brothers insta in instated him as a substitute teacher. Yet, another roadblock came about in Pierre's journey. By 1820, 
when Pierre sought admission to the brothers' novitiate in Clermont, the higher-ups of the novitiate were doubtful and very reluctant to accept his qualification due to the fact that he was of very small stature and short for most men his age. Nonetheless, at the age of 14, Pierre was allowed, begrudgingly, allowed admission into Claremont de Vichyte on February 10, 1920. And later that year, on June 22, 1820, he was given his now famous name, uh, Brother Benilde, as a lifelong follower and propagator of St. John Baptist de la Salle's beliefs and convictions. Um, in 1942, Brunel was appointed director of a school opening in, Sa in Sages, an, an isolated village on a barren plat plateau in southern France. He spent the remainder of his years, roughly 20 years of it, supervising its growth and activities of the community and his run school. The school offered proper education to the boys in the village and to some of the neighboring farms especially those who are in their teens and never actually been to school before when they were children. Brother Benilde was a quiet yet impeccable teacher and principal for his term, beloved by both faculty and students alike. The area saw a large number of vocations join the Christian brothers, just as many as 300 young men entering the order. His school quickly became the center of the social and intellectual life of the village with evening classes for the adults and tutoring for the less gifted students, all inspired by Brother Benilde's dedication and radiant effort around the village. Brother Benilde sadly passed away on August 13, 1862, aged 57, with more than 200 brothers and an impressive number of priests who had been his students at Saujas present at his death. In fact, former students vied to carry his casket to the cemetery. Mourn mourners spilled into the public square from the crowded church, and the people plucked blades of grass from nearby his tomb as relics. Brother Benil will always be remembered as a shining beacon of unprecedented remarkability. Despite Benil being vertically challenged, so to say, he was known as a strict but fair disciplinarian. He even learned to became fluent in sign language to help teach deaf and mute students. He also looked after his students by preparing meals in the brother's kitchen for hungry students, converting the old brother's robes into coats or pants for them, and spending hours tutoring students who learned more slowly than others. He referred to all students, regardless, as Monsieur, to respect, to show respect and dignity. Thank you, Kuya. Ah, Kuya, ano po pangalan ninyo? Ako si Benil. Ako, ang ganda naman ang kwento ni William. Buti na lang meron siyang natagpuan na kaibigan. Kasi kung wala, siguro maliit pa rin si William. Maliit ang tingin sa sarili. Malik ulit kayo para subaybayan ang MKK. Mga kwento ni Kalbo.